Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ventura Vineyard online church service. We're so glad you were able to join us today. Truly, it's a blessing to have you here. Welcome to a new day. Hey, I get to tell you as service host what the order of our service is for today. So after I share, we're going to have Dean McCarty lead us in a time of worship. I'll come back and give us some announcements and pray for our offering. After that, we'll have a message by one of the members of our teaching team today. That'll be Brian White, who will continue our series on the third way. From there, we'll have more worship and I'll come back to close us out. We're so glad you're here, truly. We're still distancing. I don't like it and I know you don't like it either, but here we are trying to stay safe. Wherever you are today, whether you're listening to this later or listening to us live via YouTube, we'd love for you to say hello in the chat if you haven't already done so. If you don't like the chat, you can close that out. Again, we're so glad you're here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dean McCarty. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ventura Vineyard online worship session for September 6th, 2020. That doesn't even roll off the tongue right anymore. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm tired and I wanna go home and I don't wanna play anymore. Hmm. But we can't do that. So here we are, God. I'm gonna say a prayer this morning real quick. And uh, if you wanna take a few deep breaths, just give it all up to him. Um, so that way we can worship this morning unhindered um, with a true connection. So Father God, we praise you, we thank you this morning. In all of it, God, we lean on you, we rely on you. We trust in you, Father. We pray this morning, God, that you just remove all the impurities that need to be removed and leave only what's pure and what's of you, God. God, we long to experience you this morning and the joy that only you can give. So, Father, we just give it all up to you this morning. We leave it all behind at the cross, like you told us to. And we lean into you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name.
Clap your hands. Doesn't matter who hears you. Hey, Dean, thank you so much for that time of worship. We appreciate you. Okay, this is the time in our service when I get to bring your attention to the app. The app is a great way to stay connected with the Ventura Vineyard community. You'll see on there a number of tiles, and all those tiles refer to things like what we're doing during COVID, any special events we're having, and ways to register for some of those special events. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about those in just a few minutes. But the tile I really want to bring your attention to is the giving tile. That tile is used for people who give regularly or who want to give regularly. And to those who want to give a one-time offering. Please utilize that. If you have any questions about it at all, just make sure you give us a call at the Ventura Vineyard office or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And a special thanks to those of you who have been able still to give regularly at this time. It helps us keep our virtual doors open. So thank you so much. All right, now I get a chance to give us some announcements. There's some great things happening at the Ventura Vineyard right now. So let me tell you about them. So the first one is Elf Course. We just had our first meeting this last week and we had a great turnout. It was a great time to just meet new people, talk about faith, talk about life. And I think we have a really strong team behind us. And just wanted to let you know, it's not too late to sign up for that. But make sure you do it soon because we're in these beginning phases of getting to know one another. And it's really important to be a part of that in these first few weeks. So again, you can sign up via our app, which again is so handy, or using the Ventura Vineyard website. The next announcement I have for us is that the Enneagram is back, but it's back in a form of Enneagram 201. It's going to start today after church, after our Zoom meeting, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, at 1.30 today. So again, that's today at 1.30. You can still register. There is a request that if you are coming to this, that you're very familiar with your Enneatype which means once you take the Enneagram, you'll get a chance to find out what your number is. And that shows you how you kind of see the world. This course in particular is going to focus on the ways you react to things based on that number. So it's going to be a great class. Wayne is our teacher. And if you know Wayne at all, he's got a great heart and really understands the Enneagram quite well and can help you interpret a lot of things. So come on out 1.30 today. The next announcement I have is on September 15th, that's a Tuesday, the Circle of Women group, so this is a women's group only, will be having another study on another David Benner book. This time, this book is called Surrender to Love. And the semi-titled, or the second title to that is Discovering the Heart of Christianity. In this profound book, the author, David Benner, gives a careful examination of scripture and Christian tradition that shows us how God bids us to trust in his perfect love. It too is free. You can sign up via the website and or the app, 7 p.m. And it's going to start, like I said, September 15th and go through until October 13th. All right, we hope to see some of you ladies there. The next announcement I have is that... Um, after church today, we'll have another Zoom gathering. So what that is, is after church ends, we come together, 
as many as can come, want to come, can come. And we actually process the message. So it's a great time to be with everybody else and kind of ask the questions about the message, about maybe something that was really stirred in your heart. We also have the opportunity, if you needed prayer, we have breakout rooms so we can put you together with someone from our prayer team. So if you would like to be uh, someone who receives prayer, do come at the beginning. We'll just kind of say hello to everybody and then we'll decide what people's needs are and people's wants and we'll go from there. But I really encourage you to come. I know it's, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming with all this technology that we have to use, but let me tell you how to get to that meeting. So. You know how you're watching the, the video right now. You see me right here. Well, right below me are a bunch of descriptions. There is a Zoom link right underneath my head. So find that. It's going to be in blue. Click on it and you'll get right to the meeting. That meeting will go until 12 noon. And usually the speaker of the day will be there as well. So you'll get to ask that person specific questions. So please do come. We hope to see you there. All right, before I turn it over to Brian White, I'm going to go ahead and pray for our offering. So, Father, thank you for this wonderful day, a new day. God, we lift up the offering to you. Please give us wisdom as a community to know how to best spend those offerings in a way that would reach many people for your kingdom. And, Father, I just want to pray for Brian White's message Please keep our hearts open and soft. Open our minds to hear what you would have to say to us today. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this is the time in our service where we get to hear a message, and today that is from Brian White. So ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I now would like to introduce to you Brian White. morning. My name is Brian and uh, I'm a member of the uh, teaching team here at the Ventura Vineyard and today I've entitled what I'm going to share with you uh, Labor of Love. It's a nod to today, uh, Labor Day, uh, this Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day to all of you laborers out there. Um, and of course it has another meaning which goes to the heart of my teaching. Um, the term labor of love is used to describe a person's reason for doing work, right? That may not have a self-serving or monetary benefit. And we always say we trade our time for money. Um, the work I'm speaking of, the, the labor, the, the energy, um, it's used or expended. Uh, the effort is on behalf of others. Uh, and what you get in return, a sense of purpose. Uh, goodness, satisfaction, or well-being. That's the bottom line. The well-being of others. I have two main bits of scripture assigned from the Revised Common Lectionary to share. Uh, two main points, along with some small quotes from the Bible. The two main passages uh, will magically appear over my shoulder while I read them. All of the biblical references used today will be available in the notes uh, under the date for today on the Ventura Vineyard app and can be used for your further edification, reference, uh, communication to us here at the Vineyard. I'd like to start by reading uh, the main text for today um, from the Re Revised Common Lectionary. Uh, it's Romans 13, 8 through 10. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And now, before I continue with the text, let me stop there just for a second and just unpack, especially one word, and that's that word "fulfilled." Um, fulfilled in the Greek is uh, a word "pleiorama." Uh, it's 
from the Strong's, uh, you can look it up in the Strong's, it's not from the Strong's, <laughs> you can look it up in the Strong's Concordance uh, under number 4138. Uh, Google it, that'll come up as well. Uh, it has a lot of definitions. Uh, probably the one I like the best is superabundance. It, 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 it encompasses all, all encompassing. It also has a nautical theme, which if you look over my shoulder, uh, fits with the decor. Um, it, it connotates in the maritime world, a, a full ship, uh, a heavy ship, uh, full cargo and crew. And if you look at the sailing vessel behind me, that is a full ship. And the reason why I can tell it is because the gunnel uh, the leading edge, the top edge of the vessel is deep in the water. There's not a lot of hull showing. If you look at a tanker, let's say, if a tanker has already offloaded all of its fuel or oil or whatever liquid it's carrying, usually that hull is way out of the water. Well, in the case of the boat behind me, and as I continue to teach today and your mind wanders, you can think about that word uh, fulfillment and Pleorama, the Greek. Continuing with verse 9. The commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. Um, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, Love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, this may sound familiar to those of you that have been around, uh, especially any of you that have studied the Bible you know, from beginning to end, starting with the, the Hebrew texts. Uh, Deuteronomy 6.5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and all your strength. Love God. Leviticus 19.18 says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. These are the pillars, if you will, of, of the Jewish Shema. The only debt we owe is to love one another. We'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, on your screen, there should be a pair of Camino boots. Uh, pilgrimage boots. These belong to my wife and I. Uh, today is Sunday, September 6th. In a world without a pandemic, uh, we would be starting our second pilgrimage walk uh, to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in Spain tonight, the Cathedral of the Stars. We still have the tickets uh, for a flight that was canceled long ago by our airline. Uh, so, Instead of doing that, we rented a cabin in the nearby mountains a couple of weeks ago. Uh, instead of finding the quiet, the solitude, and the clarity by walking on the Camino, uh, we fell into a, a pattern in the Los Podres National Forest. Eat, walk, read, eat, nap, read, eat, TV, stare at the stars, repeat. For several days. Even though we're very fortunate to live in a truly great town, there's something to having a change of venue. Uh, it brings with it a change of focus, a, a chance to concentrate on what is truly important. Eat, walk, read, eat, nap, read, eat, TV, stare at the stars, sleep, repeat. To greater and lesser degrees, there was meaning in each of these pursuits for us during those weeks in the mountains. Uh, for me personally, the most meaningful was my time spent with the stars. Ever since I was a child, I've loved staring at the night sky. You can ask my kids about it if you get the chance. Uh, I woke them up several times in their youth to look at the stars. I tried the same thing with my wife on this cabin trip. Uh, the Delta Aqua Rid meteor shower took place while we were up in the uh, Los Podres. It happened at its, well, it happened for several days, you know, weeks really. Uh, but while we were up there, the height of the shower occurred and it happened at 3.30 a.m. 
she opted out of that one. I didn't. I, I waited in silence, staring up the stars filled in the dark, moonless sky. I was rewarded with multiple meteors. I, I actually saw three simultaneously. They crisscrossed each other, and it was awe-inspiring. How to describe it? My, my reaction was similar to, to hearing a song a piece of music for the first time that, that I grew to love, or really truthfully loved instantly. Uh, like the first time I heard Bohemian Rhapsody. I was in my sister's New Jersey basement and it was 1975. I'll never forget that. It was mind blowing. Or the, or the first time I heard Phil Collins's Face Value album. Uh, I was an exchange student in another country. Um, I was at my host family's home. Phil Collins, man, he's short, he's bald, what's not to love? The big song from that album is the big drum song that Phil will always be best known for, and that's In the Air Tonight. The song is 39 years old, and last month, on uh, one of the more popular downloading sites, it was the fourth, 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 most downloaded song. Which brings me, uh, there should be a slide featuring two brothers. This is uh, Tim and Fred. Uh, it's r rise in popularity in the air tonight is directly attributable to these t twin 21 year old brothers. Their names are Tim and Fred Williams and they're from Gary, Indiana. They have a YouTube channel where the f they film themselves listening to songs for the first time. The, the joy of the moment, uh, the look on their faces is what I'm talking about. That's what happens to me when I have the opportunity to stargaze. If you haven't seen the clip, uh, there's over 7 million views last time I checked on YouTube. So chances are you have seen it. If you have, it's worth going back and watching again. If you have it, it's so worth it. Uh, the link will be in the app notes. So for me, looking up at the stars and having that moment of just awe and wonder um, brings a grand perspective that's sitting quietly under a canopy of stars. Simultaneously, there's a sense of the grandness of creation and the nearness of God, which brings me to my second reading of scripture. Um, this is Psalm 148. And it's, well, I'll get to what it is or what I believe it to be. Um, this translation is uh, by a man named Robert Alter. And Robert Alter is a professor uh, up at UC Berkeley. Uh, he's been a professor, teacher, writer, prolific writer. He wrote The Art of the Biblical Narrative, Art of Biblical Poetry, a couple of books that I, that I happen to own. Uh, and he owns, I, I now own a, a beautiful book which is his translation of all, all of the Psalms with a small commentary. Uh, the one thing Robert Alter does so well is finds that bridge between the compactness of the original Hebrew, uh, the whimsicalness of, of the language, and, 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 and brings that to his translation into English. I'd like to read it to you now. Psalm 148, Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him on the heights. Praise him, all his messengers. Praise him, all his armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, utmost heavens and the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the Lord's name, for he commanded and they were created. And he made them stand forever, for all time. And he set them a border that could not be crossed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all you deeps, fire and hail, snow and smoke, storm wind that performs his command, the mountains and all the hills, fruit trees and all the cedars, wild beasts, all the cattle, crawling things, winged birds, kings of the earth, and all the nations, princes, and all leaders of the earth, young men, and also maidens, 
elders together with lads. Let them praise the Lord's name, for his name alone is exalted. His grandeur is over the earth and the heavens. And may he raise up a horn for his people. Praise of all his faithful, of the Israelites, the people near him. Alleluia. This poem is a poem of praise, a psalm of thanksgiving, one of a grand cosmic vision, beginning with the heavens and moving down to the earth, to humankind. It's a summoning to all that has been created by God to worship God. All created things are encouraged to worship the creator. His grandeur is over the earth and the heavens. So here's my point one in this exhortation, this reminder, this speaking what has been heard over and over, but bears repeating again and again, that it may compel us to action. We must actively, as Christians, practice loving and worshiping God daily, not just on Sundays, not just with the incredible worship that's part of our community, but on our own out in the woods or on the beach or in our living room. It's only by this active practice, loving God, that we can love others. On to point number two. Uh, but a story, uh, an experiment, a stepping out. Uh, my wife and I, our pilgrimage, pilgrimage canceled, and being home instead of walking the trail, where we find incredible solace, we, we chose to watch both the Democratic and Republican conventions, something neither of us have done in our entire lives. When we were done with this exercise, this is what we were left with. For, for us, the best part of both conventions were the stories of the candidates when no one was looking when they were interacting with average citizens. We, sound, we found some of the stories of the normal people uh, quite compelling. It seems that both parties like to sprinkle in a little bit of hope by bringing the stories of regular folks, or as David Brooks of the New York Times put it on August 20th, when you let actual people speak, what you get is not angry populism, that TV studio concoction, but hope in the struggle of everyday life. The Democrats and the Republicans each brought that kind of hope in their own way. That, and it seemed to us a whole lot of fear. Richard Nixon said, people react to fear, not love. They don't teach you that in Sunday school but it's true. This quote seems as true today as when President Nixon said it years ago. It just felt like both parties grabbed a hold of what he said and ran with it. I, I have little doubt that we're in for a whole lot more in, in the coming months. While we watched, I kept asking myself the question, where are the leaders that believe in conflict and compromise? Uh, le leaning across, reaching across the aisle and, and finding a middle ground. Like Elvis, I, I think they've left the building. And I ask myself numerous times, d depending who was consuming the screen at the moment, do I share anything in common <laughs> with this person? Anything, anything at all. The answer most of the time was no. And I remember thinking, is this person my neighbor? No. But God said yes. Point number two, we must actively love our neighbor. In the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 12, 28 and 29, Jesus answers a question that's asked of him. 
One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the God, your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. To drive the point home, scripturally speaking, I'm going to run through a series of scriptures that are listed in the notes quickly. John 13, 34 through 35, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. 1 John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. 1 John 4, 20, whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. James 2.26 As the body without spirit is dead, so is faith without deeds is dead. Luke 6.35 Love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean to you? It's a good question. Maybe a question for the Zoom gathering after the service. What does that mean? I ask one of my adult children this question. They thought about it, and they said this. I think it's a starting point. They said that loving your neighbor as yourself, to paraphrase or to reorder it in in their language, help out and don't be an ass. (laughs) If we could just start there and move up. But there's a point to that. There's a lot of that going on right now. People are so entrenched in whatever it is that they hold dear that they won't give an inch, not an inch, won't find that middle ground, don't even think when they say or write something. What you do and what you say are important. Um, The last bit of scripture I'm going to share is uh, out of Matthew. And I'm just going to point you to it. I hope that you'll read it. You probably have read it multiple times, but I'd like you to go back. And that's Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And it's the sheep and the goats, uh, where Jesus points out the differences between the two. And it boils down to this. He says, when I was a stranger, you invited me in. When I needed clothes, you clothed me. When I was sick, you looked after me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And I can still hear Keith Green, the 1970s rock Christian prophet, pounding on his piano. I'm sure Jenny Downing winced every time. And saying, the difference between the sheep and the goats is what they did and didn't do. We are called to actively love. I use the word actively because loving God and our neighbor, our friend and our enemy alike, according to scripture, is not just an intellectual pursuit. It means physical action as well. Anthony Fauci said this recently, now is the time, if ever there was one, for us to care selflessly about one another. To love God and our neighbors, this call goes back thousands of years. These are easily spoken about truths, 
that are not so easily lived, especially in these United States, a country founded on rebellion and individualism. Today, we're called to love in the face of evil, hatred, polarization, given to us by God, spoken to us by Jesus, affirmed by the writings of the apostles. The bill that we have, the only thing that we truly owe is to love. A few questions to close. These are straightforward foundational truths of faith, and yet are we as a people characterized by these scriptures? We, the people of the Ventura Vineyard, the Christian church writ large, things that I know. I know that I've been a Christian for a long time, and I know that personally I've not always lived up to these standards. I know that to love God and to love my neighbor means that my daily focus must not be my favorite focus, me. I know I need to tell God I love him daily. I know I need to ask God daily for help to love my neighbor and give me the eyes to see what is needed and then do something about it. I know that I wish to live with only my debt to love others as outstanding. I know that we've been talking about the third way, but love seems the only way. i leave you with this quote from the Reverend Martin Luther King. I've decided to stick with love, hate, it's too great a burden to bear. Thank you.
All right, that concludes our service for today. Thank you for everyone who made this possible, to the tech team, to the teaching team, and our worship team members. Thank you so much. Because of you, we have a full service. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming. We're so glad you were able to join us to be part of our community. Hey, speaking of community, I wanted to remind you that after this, we are gonna meet for a Zoom gathering. Please join us. We wanna see you there and we want to be able to 
get to know you better, or even just see old faces, old friends. Not that anyone's old. That's not what I'm saying. Long time friends is what I meant to say. All right. We hope to join you there. Hey, I'm just going to go close this in a word of prayer now. Father, thank you for this day, another day that you have made. Father, we look to you to guide us. Guide us, Holy Spirit. We need your wisdom to live this life, to live this life in you, to live this life well, to live a life that glorifies your son, Jesus. Father, I just bless all those out there today that are watching. Be a special sense of your grace be over them today. We love you, God, and we need you so. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope to see you at the Zoom meeting. Bye, everybody. Have a great week.